In this video, we're going to look at how to solve polynomial and rational inequalities. So for problem one, we have four polynomial inequalities. And the procedure we're going to use here is very similar to the procedure that we use when we graph a polynomial function or when we graph a rational function. What we want is we want one side to be zero. Doesn't matter which one, usually it's going to be the right side. And then we want the expression on the left side, which in problem one, it's going to be a polynomial. Notice A is already factored out. B is already factored out on the left side. And that's what we want. So I'm going to be working the ones in red and then the ones that uh, I don't work out. I'll give you the answers at the end of the video. So polynomial inequality. One side zero. This is done. The left side should be factored out and it is. And then we simply find the, the zeros of that polynomial. It's already factored out. So this has a zero, negative one. Plug it in, you get zero. Five, you get zero. And negative three, you get zero. If you were solving this particular, if this were an equation, those, that, those three values would be the solutions to the equation. X plus one, X minus five, X plus three, equal, equal to zero. In this case, we're dealing with a inequality less than or equal. So then what we do is we plot these num numbers on the number line in order of size. So the larger numbers, positive numbers will be to the right, negative numbers to the left. So we'll have a negative three over here somewhere, a negative one over here. And on the end of the number line here, we'll, plus, we'll put a plus infinity. And then over here, it's gonna be negative infinity. And then we look at the, these as intervals. So one interval here to the left of negative three, an interval between negative three and negative one, an interval between negative one and five, and an interval for values greater than five. So let's start on the right side. We pick a number larger than five over here, so we'll say six, and plug it into this. Okay, six and one is positive, six minus five is positive, six and three is positive. So I have the product of three positive values, so in here it's gonna be positive between negative one and five. You can pick any number you want. Doesn't matter, as long as it's in that interval. So I'm gonna pick uh, zero. That's between negative one and five. So zero there will give me a one, then a negative five, and then a three. So the product, I, I, I simply wanna know what sign I get, positive or negative. And you can see it's gonna be negative. And then between negative three and negative one, I'll pick a negative two. And like I said, it doesn't matter which uh, what value you pick, as long as it's between those two values in that particular interval. So I pick a negative two here, negative two and one. All I care about is a sign. That'll be a negative. Negative two and a negative five, that'll be a negative. Negative two and three, that'll be positive. So negative, negative is positive, and times a positive, this will be positive. Now let's pick a number larger. Now let's pick a number less than negative three, I should say. So let's pick negative four. Negative four here and one, that'll be negative. Negative four and a minus five, that'll be negative. Negative four and three, that'll be negative. The product of three negatives is a negative. So then we just look at the inequality. For this problem here, I want values of x such that this expression on the left side is less than or equal to zero. Less than zero means negative. So that means I want this interval this interval. Now this will get it, if this will greater than or equal to zero, then I'm looking at the interval with a positive sign. So I look at values between negative three and negative one, values larger than five. So that's my solution. So negative infinity, so start on the left side, and we want uh, less than zero, so we want solution then will be negative infinity here, negative three. So negative infinity, and it goes all the way to negative three. And notice, if you have an equals here, then the negative three is included because the negative three does give me a zero there. So put a bracket here. Otherwise, if it didn't have an equals under the less than, it would just be parentheses. And then what, what other interval? Well, this one right here between negative one and five. So union, and then it's a bracket, negative one, comma five, and another bracket. The only difference for the solution, if it doesn't have the equals under the less than, that means the value is not included. So I'd have a parenthesis here on the negative three, 
and the negative one and then the five. Negative infinity and plus infinity never have a, a bracket, it's always parentheses. That's the solution for part B. Let's clear this, and that solution is an interval notation. Now for this one here, the right side is zero, but it's not factored out on the left side. So we need to factor this out. Factor out an x first, we get x, x squared plus 2x minus 8. And then we factor. Polynomial, trinomial in this case, factors into x plus 4 and x minus 2. And then we simply find the zeros of this polynomial. x, of course, will be 0 when this is 0. This factor will be 0 when x is negative 4. This factor will be 0 when x is 2. If you were solving an equation, in other words, if this was just equal to 0, then the solution to that equation would be 0, negative 4, and 2. So what we do then is we plot these on the number line. So 0 would be somewhere here, 2 would be somewhere here, negative 4 would be over here on the left side, and then on the right side we would have a plus infinity, on the left side we would have a negative infinity. And then we look at the sign of this polynomial over each of these intervals. So for numbers larger than 2, say 3, put a 3 there, 3 and minus 2 is positive, 3 and 4 is positive, and 3 here, everything's positive, product of 3 positive is positive, so in here it's a positive. Between 0 and 2, let's pick 1, 1 there is positive, 1 and 4 is positive, 1 minus 2 is negative, so if you have 1 negative, the whole thing's going to be negative here. This will be negative. And then you pick a number between negative 4 and 0 here, say negative 1, negative 1 here, negative 1 there, negative 1 there. Two of them are going to be negative, so this will cancel out. This will be positive here. For numbers less than negative 4, say negative 5, negative 5 here, negative 5 here, negative 5 here. Three negatives multiplied will give me a negative. You have the solution there in the number line. In this case, again, we're looking for less than zero, so negative. So solution comes from this interval here, this interval here. An interval notation. So we start from the left side. Now, if this, if this were greater than or equal to zero, then we look at the, the interval with a plus sign here and here. So it's less than zero, so it's negative infinity to negative four. It does have any equals. If it didn't have the equals here, this would be parentheses. But this is again a bracket. And then it's union. Everything between this interval here, 0 and 2. Again, because of the equals there, brackets be 0, 2. So again, the solution that satisfies this inequality here for less than or equal to 0 is negative infinity to negative 4, including the negative 4, brackets here, union. Everything between 0 and 2, including 0 and 2, that's why we have the, the brackets here. That's my solution for that. Now for the rational inequalities, same sort of thing. One side has to be 0. This is the easiest way to solve these. One side is 0 here. If it's not, then for example, uh, A and C are already set up. Well, one side is 0. B and D are not because you have a 2, so you have to take the 2 over and combine. The same thing with D, you have to bring this over, subtract it, and combine, and then follow the same rule, rules I'm going to use right now. So now, for A, one side is 0, and then we want the numerator, we want the left side to be a single expression. So we don't want two rational expressions here. If it is, like for example in D, if you bring this over, you have two rational expressions, 2 over x minus 1 subtract 3 over x plus 2. You have to find a common denominator and subtract. It's kind of like B, and that'll be, I'll do that one. So for this one here, for the first one then, once you have everything on one side, and once in the left, let's say the right side is 0, and the left side is one expression, then all you have to do is find the number or numbers that make the numerator 0. You can see that for this one, x plus 3 will be 0 when x is negative 3. So negative 3 is going to go on the negative line, on the uh, number line. 
The denominator factors x squared minus 4 factors into x minus 2 and x plus 2. So we plot those numbers. So we're going to plot, say, a negative 2 here. The plus 2 will go some over here to the right. And the negative 3 will go over here somewhere. And minus infinity will go here. Plus infinity will be over here somewhere. And then we determine the sign of this expression. Remember again, this one again is great. This one is now greater than or equal to zero. So we're going to be looking at the intervals with a plus sign. So let's go over here. You can start anywhere you want here. I'm going to start on the right side. Any number larger than two, you can, it's infinity. So you got a lot of choices, but you want to stay close to that number. So I'm going to pick three, pick a three. And let's see, three plus three is a positive number. You square it, that's positive. And then 3 squared is 9 minus 4. That's a positive. All I need is the sign, a positive or a negative. So I get that. And then you pick a number between negative 2 and 2, any number you want. I'm going to pick 0. Easy to plug in. Put 0 where the x is and square it. 0 and 3 spot is a 3 squared. You get a positive 9. 0 in the denominator squared, you get negative 4. So you get positive or a negative. So in here, it's negative. Now between negative 3 and negative 2, I'm going to pick, say, negative 2.5. That's in between there. Now for the numerator, it doesn't matter because negative 2.5 and 3, and you square it, it's going to come out positive either way because of the square. So in the denominator, notice if I put a negative 2 here, negative 2.5, this is negative, negative 2.5. This is negative. Negative times a negative gives me a positive. So in here it's going to be positive. And if you pick a number larger than or less than negative 3, say negative 4, in the numerator because of the square, it'll come out positive. Denominator because of the square here, that'll come out positive over positive. So this is positive there. So there you have it. Now, a lot of times, once once you get the sign for one region, the signs are going to alternate, as you saw in the uh, first examples. It's not going to happen when you have something like this with a square. So sometimes, if you if you see you're not you don't have a repeated factor, it'll go plus minus plus minus. But when you got this, notice there it didn't alternate. So if you're unsure, test test each interval. So now we're, what are we looking for? This is greater than or equal to zero. So we're looking at the positive ones. So the solution then for this one, positive. So we have this one is included positive. So this one is included here. So what you see here is that, and, and again, negative three is a solution because that makes it zero. So negative three is included. So basically this includes, this includes everything from negative infinity up to negative 2. Notice in this case, even though I have an equals here, I, can't, I cannot include the negative 2 because negative 2 makes the denominator 0. Division by 0 is undefined. So in this case then, what I would do then is I would say it's going to go from negative infinity to, and it's going to include everything in here, the, the negative 3 up to negative 2, but not the negative two. So instead of a bracket there, I put a parenthesis. And then it's union. Again, this two is not included because two makes the denominator zero. So if this were a polynomial type, you would, but because it's zero in the denominator, it's parenthesis here, and this goes to infinity. And that's the solution for that one. Now, for this one here, I have a two here less than or equal, so I have to fix it. So it'd be 2x minus 1 over x plus 4. Got to bring this over. I can add numbers to both sides of the inequality. It doesn't change the uh, direction. It's only when you multiply by a negative. So I can just say, okay, I'm going to bring that over. That's the same thing. I a minus 2. This will be less than or equal to 0 here. And then I need a common denominator here, so I'm going to multiply this is minus 2 over 1, so I'm going to multiply by x plus 4 here, and x plus 4. So what am I going to have then? I'm going to have x plus 4 
this will be 2x minus 1. Then multiply here, be a minus 2x minus 2 times 4 is a minus 8. And this will be less than or equal to 0. Minus 2x and the 2x cancel. Minus 1 and a minus 8 is a minus 9 over x plus 4. This is going to be less than or equal to 0. So now we have the right side 0. And we have a negative 9 over x plus 4. So now we want to find the numbers that make the numerator 0. Well, there's not any because we don't have an x there. But the denominator 0 is at negative 4. So I'll plot a negative 4 right there. Let's look at this. If I pick numbers larger than negative 4 here, say 0, I get a negative over a positive. So this will be negative in here. If I pick a number less than, if I pick a number less than negative 4, say a negative 5, put it in here, I get a negative over a negative. This will be positive. But we want less than or equal to 0. That means we have to go with this one. Infinity will be over here, minus infinity over here. So the solution for this one goes from negative 4, and the negative 4 is not included because it makes the denominator 0, so this will have to have a bracket here, or a parentheses rather. This will be negative 4, comma, infinity. And that's the solution for this one. And then I'm going to clear this and then show you the answers to the other ones here. You can pause the video to take it from there. But here are the answers. Obviously the ones that I did are there also. And then the ones I didn't do, if you want to practice those, just pause the video and take those down. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.